you so much for watching the Press Avenue YouTube channel. My name is John and we talk about WordPress tutorials to help you create sites for both personal and business use. Today we got a question on how to accept PayPal payments in WordPress. We have a Facebook group which is facebook.com slash group slash Press Avenue. You can see it right here. And 20 hours ago, Kelly asked how is there a plugin? Do I use the button, etc.? PayPal does provide a way to drop a little bit of code into an HTML field to have a button. But as far as consulting sessions or invoice payments, we personally like to use a form to get additional info, uh, additional contact info, and the payment all in once. And we'll show you how to do that. So today we're using WP Forms. For more information, their website's wpforms.com. When you land there, you see something like this. Um, it's a drag and drop forms builder, kind of new on the scene, uh, but definitely packs a punch and does what a lot of the other guys do, plus a little bit more. Um, these are a few things that it does. Uh, so here's the PayPal add-on, which we'll be talking about today. But you can get people into your email marketing. You can do guest posting, you connect to Zapier, which connects you to just tons and tons of other automations and features, uh, and that's it there. To use the payment add-ons, you have to have the pro version, and let's go take a look. I believe right now they're having a 50% off deal, um, and additionally, since this is, let's see, November 7th, 2019, I would also check out Black Friday deals, which come up at the end of the month. So if you can wait, do wait and hopefully you can save more, but 50% is pretty good if you need it right now immediately. All right, so let's get to it. Money. Uh, let's see. So we'll go over to our testing site here, and we have WP Forms installed, um, and it's the pro version. So I've gone in um, and downloaded that from the account. They did provide this for free for my unbiased review. And honestly, at first I wasn't sure because I love Gravity Forms, but I'm actually really loving this plugin and everything it does. So let's go ahead and go down here. So I've activated WP Forms, and then I have the light version because I did an additional video on that. You can check the playlists. And then I have some add-ons. We're gonna activate the PayPal standard add-on. And then I'm just going to activate MailChimp to show you just a couple things while we're there. And now we're going to create a payment form. So I'll go to WP Forms. I have a blank form already in here, but if I click Add New, it now gives me templates that I can choose from. So I can do Request a Quote Form, the Billing Order Form, so you can collect payments on products or services with a ready-made form. That's what I love about this. The templates automatically come with it. Additionally, you can get a templates pack add-on um, that adds even more templates. So you can make this super fast. To show you the billing and order form template, you click here, you give it a minute to load, and then it says name, email, phone, address, items, total, and a message. We are actually gonna go back and just build something similar uh, from scratch so you can see how it's done. So I'm gonna add new, we're gonna name it Let's see, what do they want here? Consulting or session based business. All right, so that's what we'll do. We will say consulting payment. And I'm gonna do a blank form. And we'll let this load. All right, so consulting payment right there, that's the title, and then it shows you up here what we're editing. Then this arrow shows, hey, you gotta add some fields. So first, I will add a name field. Let's see, I oh, know yeah, it's right there. Name, so I click name, there it is. Um, so under the name here, I can get first and last under format. Simple, which is just one straight line. I usually do simple um, if it's a longer form um, and let people input whatever they want just to get them to fill the thing out. Um, first, middle, last, I only use for applications, say like a volunteer application where you need to know everything. 
Um, I actually leave it at first and last. And then I'll make this required. They have additional kind of field sizes and you can hide the labels and you can do conditionals as well if you didn't already know. All right, so go back to add fields. We'll do their name and then I will ask for their business name. And I'm not gonna leave that as required. Then I'm gonna ask for an email. And then I'm gonna go back to add fields, a phone number. And the phone number, some people don't like to be called, so I actually leave that off. It is easier to call and clarify, um, but people don't always like that. Here we can get into the payment details. So if you sent them an invoice, they might have an invoice number. So you could add a numbers field or even a single line text. Um, so I can put this in here and I can say invoice number and say check, okay, located. Sometimes people can't find this, um, so they can add their number there if you have an invoice number. So that's just one thing you can do. We'll get rid of this, go back to field options. Um, next, you talked about date and times. So I can put this date right here, and I can say what times work for you next week. So if you're a week out, maybe next week or the next two weeks or the next month, um, so you can say date and time, you can say this is required. What times would you like to? And I required advanced conditionals, perfect. Um, so if I hit save, and let me open a new window here and we can start previewing this. Let's see, we'll go here. Um, the date field is really nice because it fills in a date picker for you. So let's go to preview, move this over. Let it load. So phone, date, when I click this, just a really big thing. Hey, the 13th at whatever. Um, additionally, you can add in a description. Uh, meetings available on Tuesday and Thursdays from, let's say, 8, 8 a.m. to, we'll just say 4 p.m. So they can fill it in there. If you need additional functionality beyond this, I would check out Calendly. I'll put a link down below, which allows people to pick dates and times based on your uh, availability through your Google Calendar. But we're gonna keep to this because this works pretty well. All right, so they put in their date and times. Next, we're gonna do a field for payment. So we'll say one session is, I don't know, $150. So we'll say single item. And we'll say session is 150 bucks and then we can leave it at that and then every payment option needs a total so the total just adds it up if you want multiple items so you can say wait i want all these items so how many sessions sessions would you like or meetings or whatever one meeting Maybe we do, whoops, two meetings. Maybe we give them a deal if they pay in advance. So we'll say, that's not a deal. There we go. Three meetings. So maybe one's 150. Two, let's see. Buy meeting times in advance to save. There we go. So now we're gonna save some money on our sessions. Let's delete this. So how many ses ses sessions would you like? I can trip over that all day long. 
What times would you like to meet next week? Additional meetings will be scheduled later. All right. Meetings. One, two, three. You can put an image choice. So image choice just means you put images on each one. You can see the placeholder there. Having an image for this doesn't make that much sense, so we'll just leave it at that. There's our total, and then lastly, um, actually we'll leave it at that. You could do an additional checkbox like, hey, do you want me to audit your website? Hey, do you want me to do X, Y, Z? And it could be optional, and that's how you do a checkbox. Um, now we will go to payments, and we're gonna do PayPal, and we're gonna enable PayPal, and our PayPal, PayPal, uh, is just PayPal on our website if you want to send us money. Um, you can do production just means live. We're taking live payments. If you want to test out how this works, I would set it to test or sandbox. Payment type, is it a donation or is it a product and service? You only select donation if you're a nonprofit and it's set up that way through PayPal. You have to apply and let them know. It doesn't, doesn't just happen magically. And then the canceling URL, Send users if they do not complete checkout. Um, you can make an additional page and say, hey, sorry, it didn't work. Shipping, um, you don't need shipping for this kind of thing, so you don't need to ask for that. Don't ask buyer to include a note with the payment. I usually turn this off, and the reason is, sometimes you forget to see the notes within the payment, and you're like, hey, I got 150 bucks, that's awesome. But you miss the note completely. So I do leave that off, because people may say like, hey, I asked for this in the note. I don't want it in the note, I want it in the form. You could add a section that says, hey, I'd love additional comments. Actually, we can do just that. Let me save this, go back, and I can say paragraph text, drag it to right here. Let's see. Questions or comments, question mark. Um, we can just leave that at questions or comments. And then you can say, hey, I need X, Y, Z from you, and you can put that in here. So that's how you create it, so that's saved. Now that the form's saved, we need a page on our WordPress site. So I'll go to Pages, and again, this is just a testing site, but I can say Add New, puts us in the editor, we'll use the standard editor for this, and we can say Meeting, All right, let's do meeting setup. And now it says choose a block. I'll go to plus here or plus up here. Then you can just type WP forms. There it is. Select your form, consulting payment. It loads it, publish. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. View. And then we have it here. So you can put it on our phone. Times, if I do one meeting, you see the total. 150 does the math for you. Two meetings, three meetings. Oh, three meetings, you get a deal. Um, <laughs> I was going to do five, let's see, 150, 300, 400. I was going to do like 400. You can leave a comment. So you can just say comment here. The total's 250. Again, there's that three or that five, $50, excuse me. When I hit submit, it now brings me to PayPal. Um, and it says, zoom way in here. There's the $50 shopping cart total. They can log in or they can pay with a debit or credit card. So sometimes I mention on the form, especially when using PayPal, that you don't have to log in, just click the gray button that says pay with debit or credit card. Uh, or they can cancel and return. Um, so that's where you put in that cancellation link. So if you do pay with debit or credit, it then loads the credit card field. So you can see it's populated up here, this is $50. You fill out your card and hit pay now, and then we're done. Um, so that's how it works. I'll go back and then back one more time. The last thing I'll say is um, if you go to WP Forms and then Settings, if you don't take USD or US dollars, under Payments, where it says Currency, you would then select your currency here. So there it is there. 
Uh, I take USD, so that's what it's at by default. Um, but do make sure to do that. Should have done it at the beginning of the video, but I just remembered. If this video was helpful in any way, I'd love a thumbs up. Additionally, let me know in the comments if it worked or didn't work, or if you have any other additional questions about WP Forms or just WordPress in general. Lastly, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button to see more WordPress tutorials like this. And additionally, you can go to facebook.com slash group slash press avenue and ask questions just like this. And I'd love to answer them via videos because other people have these questions as well. It's just they didn't ask. So thank you so much for your questions and for watching. Money.